Hello, and welcome to the International Quilt Museum's Virtual First Friday Fun. I'm Lauren Holt, Education Coordinator at the museum, and today we're going to be talking about Terry Mangott's Capturing the Moment exhibition and how you can make your own embellished fabric art with a postcard. Embellishments on quilts can take many forms, and the word usually refers to objects like beads, embroidery, or other decorative stitching. Some crazy quilts feature these details, but few come close to the level of detail that Terry Manga achieves today. Terry Manga is credited with starting the modern day quilt embellishment movement. She started collecting fabric and embellishments early in her childhood and began quilting after studying printmaking and ceramics at the University of Kentucky. Her work often features beads, sequins, shishimirs, cowrie shells, found objects, buttons, ribbons, 3D decorative stitching, and many other added objects that add depth and detail to her quilts. In her fireworks series, many of her embellishments are reflective. Sequins, gems, metallic thread, safety pins, smooth shells, and shiny beads all catch the light, adding to the sense of glitter and movement in the quilts, as if you were watching a fireworks show caught in time. In a recent interview, Mangit shared this about her fireworks quilts. I started going every year to watch the fireworks on the river and every year I would like try I would like try to memorize how the um, smoke marked the sky and how the fire marked the sky and um in my first firework quilt like I I was trying to make the lines with embroidery but it just wasn't strong enough and so that was one of the earliest quilts that I painted on it was because I had to make a mark bigger than embroidery could do in fireworks in the museum collection, glittery threads and paint sketch out the lines of falling light over a backdrop of explosive color. And in freedom fireworks, shells and beads create a sense of the tiny winking sparks that follow a firework's first pop. Flower pot fireworks combines fabric, beads, safety pins, paint, and a display of wooden stakes that creates depth and reminds me at least of watching a fireworks show over a lake or pond with the colors reflecting on the water. Some of Terry Mangott's latest quilts are landscapes based on paintings she created during quarantine in 2020, capturing a place at a specific point in time and mindset. She described her process of moving from painting to quilt like this. So the first ones, I put these great big pieces of brown paper. I have a 12 foot work wall. So I put these huge pieces of, of paper up and I take a paintbrush and I like, I look at the painting and I drew the form on the brown paper. And then I just started figuring out what fabrics I would use to make that landscape. That's how I did the first, I think the first two or three like drawing it on it. And then sometimes I would, sometimes I would take a, some uh, tracing paper and trace a, a section. And sometimes I would just cut that big brown thing apart and use it as a general pattern. So what I would do is I would like, I would like lay, I would cut a, a line and then I would lay another fabric under it and turn it under and baste it down. And then I would just like spend a whole day in my studio basting these pieces together with big stitches. And then at night, I sit in my green chair and I and I do hand applique, like hand, if you look at them real close, you can see that I've hand stitched it all together. The bright, deeply saturated colors and layers of fabric in these quilts create an intense viewing experience and the embellishments in both stitching and added objects shift the narrative as you look closer. In this quilt called Witnesses to the Struggle, the artist has added blooms to the white tree in the foreground with red and white buttons, beaded flowers, tiny cameos, and beads that range from tiny white seeds to skulls, nuns, and shells. The painted fabrics add to the sense of layered history with wolves and human figures buried under a heavy swath of round metallic beads topped by white crosses adorned with tiny pastel colored flower beads. In the bottom right corner, elaborate beaded flowers cluster together as an anchor. About this quilt, Terry shared. The one that has the, the tree, the one that's called Witness to the Struggle, that quilt, that one was really hard. And I like, it was for some reason, it was hard for me to make it look good to me. And so that's why it has so much embellishment. It took all of that 
embellishment to pull it to where I thought it was acceptable. Painting the Enchanted Circle is a self-portrait with some details pieced from fabric, some painted, and some decorated with glittery beads and buttons. At the top of the quilt, red beads highlight exploding volcanoes and a mirror of the paint streaming from Terry Mangott's brush, in a way she says reflects that the paintbrush is feeling the energy of getting to paint in such a beautiful place. Printed flowers are appliqued into her hair, and her shirt's grid of brightly colored squares reminds the viewer of paint swatches or quilt blocks. At the bottom center, Mangot holds a paint palette heavy with beads and buttons that glitter and shine in the light. She said, To me, the most fun part about that quilt is the part that tells you that the beads are the paint. You know, like the palette has all those beads painted on where the paint should be. It's like, that's like, that's like a statement for me about how the beads can also be the paint or the fabric or whatever, you know, it's like it all goes together as the expression. With these examples in mind, let's move on to the challenge. Today, the challenge is to make your own embellished fabric art in the form of a postcard. This can be a sewing project or a crafting project, depending on the materials you have. One option is to use fabric scraps you already have and basic craft supplies. This example of layered irregular shapes, fabric hearts, and a small button uses only fabric shapes, glue stick, a single button, and a postcard base. This style is light and thin enough to be sent through the mail if you like. Another sewing focused option is to create a piece block for your card. This example, featuring stripes in purple, blue, and green, is strips of fabric sewn together and then glued to a postcard backing. You could decorate this further with stickers, pipe cleaners, or any other craft items you enjoy. Depending on what embellishments you add, this style could also be sent through the mail. If you're inspired by Tara Mangott's technique as well as her style, you can use a combination of piecing, applique, and quilting, as in this example. For this card, the fabric landscape was appliqued onto a base fabric and then quilted into a piece of felt and embellished with sewn on beads. This version can be heavy and more fragile and might work better as wall art than as a mailed card. You can use any materials you like, but this video will feature a few basic ones and a short tutorial if you need it. This tutorial is also available as a PDF linked in the description. For this project, you will need a blank postcard or cut cardstock, approximately four inches by five inches, fabric or felt for your design in various colors, embellishments could be beads, buttons, sequins, embroidery, etc., paper and pencil for designing, and fastener tools. So that could be needle and thread or fabric glue, glue stick, or if you know how to use it, an iron and a fusible web product, and fabric scissors. For cutting out your designs. Optional supplies include batting or felt for a quilting effect, cut to size, paper scissors and cardstock to make templates for applique, and a stamp to send your card. Steps. Step one. Decide on the type of art you want to make, sewn or glued, quilted effect or not. Keep in mind weight and width are important to the postal service and shipping. Larger, more 3D or heavier cards may need an envelope or more stamps to be mailed. Step two, prepare your postcard. A standard postcard size is about four inches by five inches, but anything that is under four and a quarter inches high by six inches long and 0 0.016 inches thick can be mailed as a postcard. Step three, plan your design. You can either use improvisational piecing as you go or draw a design ahead of time. Step four, cut your fabric to desired shapes. You might want to use a base fabric, especially if you are using applique or quilting. Make sure to leave enough of a border to wrap around the back of the card. I recommend about half an inch width of cloth. This could be a separate piece of fabric to make a fake binding, or it could be the folded over edge of your base fabric. Step five, layer or piece your fabric onto your design. You can do this with sewing, glue, or iron-on fusible material if you have it. Step six, if you're using a batting layer, add it and add your quilting stitches to your design. Step seven, attach your embellishments. These could be beads, decorative stitches, 
buttons, bells, stickers, or any other notions or craft supplies that you like. Step eight, attach your fabric art to the card. I recommend glue for this part, but you could use iron-on fusible webbing as well. If you want to sew the fabric down, use large stitches or widely spaced sections of stitches to avoid perforating the card too much so that your card does not come apart. Be aware of where you're stitching if you want to use the card to write a message. Step nine, finish your edges. I folded and hand pressed my edges and glued them down. This method has held together well, but you will want to make sure that your fabric is lying flat as the glue dries. Step 10, display your art or write a message and mail it to someone. Whatever you choose to make, we'd love to see the results. And I hope you'll share your art with us in the comments below this video on Facebook or by tagging us at International Quilt Museum on Instagram, or you could mail it to us if you want to. If you'd like to see more of Terry Mangott's quilts, the Capturing the Moment exhibition is currently on display at the International Quilt Museum until April 23rd, 2022, and virtually in our online gallery at www.internationalquiltmuseum.org slash exhibition slash capturing dash moment dash works dash Terry dash Mangott. To hear more of Terry Mangott's own words about her quilts, we invite you to join us in person at the museum on Saturday, December 4th at 11 o'clock a.m. when she will be leading a gallery walkthrough of the exhibition. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and thank you for joining us for First Friday Fun.